Justin Timberlake says he has been diagnosed with Lyme disease. He calls the illness relentlessly debilitating both mentally and physically. This announcement has many wanting to know more about the disorder. Dr. John Alcott, director of the Johns Hopkins Lyme Disease Research Center, is joining us now to explain the condition. Thank you so much for being with us. Nice to be with you. I think, I think people know you get Lyme disease from ticks, mm -hmm. but I think what people don't understand is that symptoms can present in many different ways mm -hmm. to different people. So can you just talk about, you know, all the symptoms you end up seeing and how you would know you have Lyme disease? Sure. I mean, the, the classical um, early manifestation is the rash, and people often call it a bullseye rash, like a target lesion, but often they're just a round red skin lesion that looks like a spider bite to many people, but that's often accompanied by diverse symptoms of fatigue, what patients call brain fog, and malaise, and joint pain. And then if not recognized and treated, that can go on to later stages. Prominently, the nervous system can be involved later. That can present with meningitis or mm. nerve dysfunction from the peripheral nerves. And that can be uh, what's called a facial palsy or painful nerves as well. And then if that's not recognized later, six to 12 months later, actually, people can get uh, arthritis. And that's typically a oh, swollen wow. knee. So wow. lots of manifestations no depending. Yeah, that it could be that extreme. You know, it's interesting to hear Justin Timberlake describe it as debilitating. I don't, I don't think most people think of Lyme disease as that severe, but as you mentioned, it can grow to that. Um, how long do you have to have it for it to become that severe? Well, you know, um, weeks to months, actually. And it, people, patients often describe it as having a flu that will never go away. Mm. So, um, yeah, no, it, that can happen, you know, within the four to six weeks where people are quite sick. So that's, is it one of those things that if you have a rash, you get into the doctor, you get some treatment, it's not going to progress mm -hmm. or is it always going to progress? And, you know, I think we've seen over the years some other celebrities where it's not caught right away that almost decades later they find out they've had Lyme disease. And how does that happen? That's right. So if you get diagnosed and treated early, the majority of people do well. But some people um, uh, go on to what's often called chronic Lyme disease. And those are persistent symptoms that, that don't get better. And that can happen even after um, uh, antibiotic treatment, which is the proper treatment. Wow. Some people, mm. 10 to 20 percent, will remain ill. And it kind of looks like um, long COVID, which we understand ah. now is another infection that um, can leave you know 10 to 20 percent of people ill for months or even years afterwards. Yeah, just those lingering impacts. 10 to 20% is a significant amount of people. It is. Yeah, it really, you know, we're learning more and more about this. It's it's hard to recognize um, um, in the late stages sometimes because the blood tests that are currently available don't always work well. Mm. And so it really requires um, listening to the patient and taking a meticulous history. And, you know, often the patients look okay on the outside, mm -hmm. but it is described they're, they're suffering tremendously from this fatigue and malaise. And, and it, you have to be careful to look for that as a physician. All right. Very interesting. Well, and it is a summer month, so if you're outside, make sure you check mm -hmm. yourself for ticks every time you go out, whether it's on a hike or just going out to the backyard. So I you don't end guess. up in Dr. Alcott's yes, office. Yes, exactly. So, <laughs> thank you so much for being with us this morning. Absolutely.